folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So today, a treat especial to quote one of my favorite YouTubers and fellow Canadians. We're going to take a look at BachBot, or Iced ID, as it's also been called, and we're going to look at the ways that they've packed this sample and then the final injection stage. So there's two blog posts I saw on this, one from Talos originally, which is quite thorough and detailed, and I'll link to that in the description of the video below, and then a second one from Vitaly, which was also very thorough thorough, speaking about the last stage that we're going to talk about. But what they didn't cover was all the stages that lead up to the last stage. And then what happens once you actually unpack the final stage? How do you massage that into something you can analyze in IDA? So we're going to cover the whole analysis in this tutorial. It's quite a long one, and I'll probably break it down into two sections. So in the first section, we're going to talk about the commodity packers and how to unpack those. And in the second section, we'll talk about their sort of strange code injection that they do and how to build a PE file out of that and how to build the imports for it. So that part's a little bit complicated and uh, I think it'll probably take the same amount of time to look at that as it will to do the first two stages of unpacking. So in total, there are three stages of Packer with BachBot, or at least with the sample that we're looking at. And the last stage is a custom one that they have and the first two stages are commodity packers. So with that, let's dive in. And uh, the first place to start is probably take a look at it in hybrid analysis. So if we pop over here, I've uploaded it's hybrid analysis and I want to look at the process tree as I usually do here because I want to see what types of injection I want to look for when I'm doing some debugging. So the first thing I see here is here's the the sample that we submitted and it's actually started a copy of itself and you'll recall from some of our previous tutorials whenever you see a sample that runs a copy of itself it's almost always doing a run PE style injection into the second process and we have a couple tricks that I'll show you guys for debugging this for basically carving out whatever they're injecting. So uh, that definitely looks like that's what's going on here. And then we see the sub process here actually starts another process of SVC host. And that of course is almost certainly going to be injection. Anytime you see uh, malware starting SVC host, I and mean, pretty much the only reason they're doing that is to inject code into it. And so again, we're gonna have to look at the injection techniques here. Now I know from reading the blog posts about this, that this second injection into SVC host is the special uh, sort of custom BachBot injection. And when we get to that, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys what I mean. So let's jump over to our VM and we'll start tackling the first two stages. So here I've copied the sample over to our VM. And of course we are using a x86 VM, a Windows 7 VM. And if you guys are interested in setting up your own VMs uh, using the same tools that we use here, I will link our tutorial in the description of the video below where we show you how to go through setting up your VM. And we have some scripts that you guys can use to set it up uh, with the same tools. Today we're gonna be using x64 debug, PE bear, and a hex editor. Those are going to be our main tools. So let's start out with x64 debug here. We'll open it up and we'll copy iced ID over into it. And so from looking at the process tree and hybrid analysis, like I said before, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some process injection. So the breakpoints that we want to set to sort of catch what's being injected are going to be create process internal W. So that's going to be when they actually create the process. Write process memory because we want to see if they actually write something into that process and resume thread. And we put a breakpoint and resume thread just in case we mess up and they actually resume the process that they've created before we can identify what's being injected into it. We kind of just want that heads up so we can kill the process and restart. So I'm going to start with those three breakpoints and uh, see if we can't figure out what's being injected. So I'm just going to use the command line here because I know that API calls off by heart that we want a breakpoint on. So it's pretty easy to just type them in. So we just do a BP create pros W. Okay. And then we do a BP on write process memory. Okay, and a breakpoint on resume thread. Okay, and then we're just gonna run and we're gonna see if we can identify what's being injected into that process. So we're just gonna hit run here. And of course, uh, we hit the entry point, which always has a breakpoint on it in X64 debug. And we'll just keep debugging here. Okay, so we've hit a breakpoint on create process internal W. And we can see down here in the arguments on the stack that they are starting a copy of themselves here. So the ice ID exe, that's what they're starting. So we're just gonna continue running here. Oh, so we hit our breakpoint on write process memory. So now it looks 
looks like maybe they're going to write something into the process. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at what they're writing in and see if we can't find maybe a PE file sitting in memory somewhere that we can carve out. So uh, in order to do this, we need to know what arguments are passed to write process memory. So let's just take a look at the MSDN for it. So we can see the first argument is the handle to the process. Uh, next one is the base address and then a pointer to the buffer that they're going to write in. So let's take a look at the stack here. So of course, the first thing on the stack is the return address for the call. So this is the first argument here. So that's going to be the handle to the process they're writing to. Next argument is a pointer to the base address. And then the next argument down is the pointer to the buffer that contains the data that they're writing to the process. So let's just uh, right click, follow D word and dump. And we can see uh, this is what they're actually going to write to the uh, process, which is kind of interesting. Not sure uh, what that is, but I definitely don't see a P file in here anywhere. So uh, let's just continue running and we hit write process memory again. So let's take a look at uh, again, one, two, three, the third argument on the stack here. Uh, follow do word and dump. And uh, now it looks like something that looks like code. So let's scroll up a little bit and see if maybe there's a PE file here. Are we lucky? Uh, I don't see a PE file. So we're just going to continue running. Maybe they're going to write it in later. And you might be wondering like, what else are they writing into the process um, if they're not writing a PE file? The thing is they have to set up the context for the process that they're writing into so that they, when they resume it, um, it will resume execution into the code that they write into it. Now we don't really care about this. That's why I'm kind of skipping by it because we're looking for a PE file in memory that we can dump out. If we were looking to dump the injected process instead of dumping it out of the current process's memory, then yeah, we would maybe care about what context they're setting. But in this case, we don't really care. A lot of times what they're doing is they're changing the header of the existing process so that it points to the uh, code that they're injecting. So let's just keep running here. And uh, we have another write process memory. So again, take a look at the third argument on the stack here, which is gonna be a point to the buffer that they're writing into the process. Follow and dump. I definitely don't see anything in here. What are they doing? They're writing some zeros in. Ah, I think they're trolling me. They're writing too many things in. I don't see any PE files. Let's see, four times the charm. Uh, let's take a look here. Hey, okay, so it looks like, what was that, six? <laughs> um, write process memories later, but uh, I was certain that at some point they would have to write a PE file in there. So I can see it here sitting in the memory dump. And again, it was the uh, third argument down that was passed to write process memory. So here we can see there's a PE file here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dump that out and we're gonna take a look at it in PE bear. And something important to note here. So they're actually writing this PE file directly into the process space of the process that they just created. And that tells me that this P file is probably in its mapped format. So in some of the older tutorials, you've seen us talk about uh, the difference between a map P file and an unmapped P file. So a normal P file that you see on disk, uh, you know, something .exe is going to be in its unmapped format. So that's going to be in its file format. And when it's actually mapped into memory to be run, all of the sections are readdressed to their virtual addresses. And that's what's called a mapped P file. And of course, if you want to execute a P file, you need to map it first. So the fact that they're actually writing this directly into memory makes me think that they've probably already unmapped it in memory. So let's dump this out and I'll take a look at it in PE bear and I'll show you what I mean here. So uh, to dump it out, I just right click follow in memory map and then right click on the memory and uh, dump memory to file. And I'll save it to the desktop here as uh, iced ID. Yes. All right, and then if we open up PE bear here and we copy this dump over, it's a valid PE. And if we look at the session headers here, so if it was mapped at virtual address one and three zeros is where this section would start. And if it was unmapped, it would start at four and two zeros. Now, I also noticed something else here. I noticed that these uh, section names are UPX, which is a very popular packer. <laughs> And so uh, maybe this is UPX packed, but let's take a look at the map versus unmap first. So the way to tell this is if we open up our hex editor here and we copy our ISID into it. So because this is a UPX file, and if we look here, we can see that uh, UPX actually does a section overwrite. So they create a section when it's mapped, uh, they create a new section here, and then they write code into it and then transfer execution over to it. So if it's in its unmapped, format, then what we would expect to see is we would expect 
to see some code starting at four and two zeros. But if it's in its mapped format, we would expect to see some code starting at six and three zeros. And we would expect to see a bunch of null bytes before it. So normally I would check the first section. So I would check to see if there's code at one and three zeros. But because it's UPX, I'm going to skip the first section because there may not be code in that first section yet because of the nature of UPX. So I'm gonna check the second section instead. So if we pop over to our hex editor here and we scroll down to six and three zeros, I'm gonna see if there is a bunch of code that starts exactly at that address. And it looks like there is. Yes, so exactly at six and three zeros, we have some code that starts and a bunch of null bytes before. So that tells me that this file is indeed mapped. And what we need to do is we need to change these addresses so that the virtual addresses are now the raw addresses because on disk is the unmapped format. But of course, now that we've dumped a map PE file, the unmapped format is gonna be identical to the map format. So in order to make this work, what we have to do is we just sort of copy these addresses over into the unmapped format and we just make them match up. And we change the size to match up as well. And then we're gonna save this P file because it's in its new format and it should be ready to run. So we're going to save it as unmap.exe. Okay, so now we have an interesting decision. So most of you who are familiar with UPX know that there is just a tool that you can use to unpack UPX pack files. So you just run UPX dash E or whatever and it should unpack UPX pack files. But because this is now in its mapped format, those tools probably won't work. They're expecting those sections to be at their old unmapped addresses. And because we had to change this to make sure that the mapped and unmapped sections were aligned, it, those tools probably won't work. So instead, what we're gonna have to do is probably gonna have to debug it live, but it's not a big deal because UPX is one of the simplest and easiest packers to defeat. So I'll just show you a quick trick once we load it up. So let's kill our session here. Start x64 debug again and copy over our extracted PE here. So now if we go to run until the entry point. So now that we have the entry point here, let's follow it in a graph. And what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for a jump to a register. So a jump EAX. Now with UPX, this is just a commonly known instruction that after they do their unpacking, they just call that instruction and EAX contains the address of the unpack section. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to look in our graph here and try and find uh, a jump to EAX here. And it's gonna be at the end of one of these trees. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Uh, it's actually a jump to an address. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here and add a breakpoint on it. And we'll pop back to our CPU view. And again, I only know this because I'm familiar with how UPX works and uh, it's just a commonly known trick. Now, if I didn't know this, we could just use the same tricks that we've used before with hooks on virtual unlock and virtual protect. But uh, because we know this trick, we can skip over all of that. So let's just run and hopefully we hit that breakpoint. And so we've hit the breakpoint here and now let's jump into it. It, and now we're sitting at OEP for the uh, unpacked section. So we know that this is actually OEP here. So now we can use our Scylla tool to actually dump this out. So let's attach to process and OEP is here. So we'll change that up and we're going to dump it out. Save that out to the desktop again. And then we wanna fix the import address table. So to do that, we're gonna do a uh, import address table auto search. And uh, yeah, we'll use the advanced results. Okay, and then we wanna get our imports and we can see that we've successfully got some imports. So we probably did this correct. And then we wanna do a fix dump and we're just gonna select the dump that we already dumped out here. All right, so now that's gonna give us a newly fixed dump and that should be the unpacked version of this uh, PE file. So we can kill this up and kill this out. And now we have a unpacked BokBot or ICE.IE payload. So why don't we take a look at that sample in IDA and see if we can figure out what it's doing. Okay, so I flipped over to my other VM here and I have uh, IDA loaded up and I just loaded up the fixed dump in IDA, the one that we just fixed with Scylla. And we can start taking a look at it here and figure out what it's doing. So I'm just gonna F5 it to speed it up a little bit. And we can see here in the entry point, that's pretty simple. Check command lines and then call a bunch of functions here. So the first thing that kind of stands out to me here is these uh, variable assignments with numbers. So looking at these numbers, I think that they're in the ASCII range. So I'm gonna just hover over it and press the R button to try and turn them into chars. And it looks like they are characters. So this is kind of, this kind of looks like maybe they're building a stack string. And this is what we call 
uh, an obfuscation technique when you build a string based on assigning variables uh, on the stack and then you build it letter by letter. So what we can do here is we can kind of look at the variable here. Uh, so five is S, six is V, S, V, C, H, O, S, T, dot, E, X, E. So SVC host dot EXE is going to be a snack string built on var5. So we can rename this as var uh, SVC host underscore EXE. And then we can see where it's used. Um, so it's going to be used in these two calls here. And there's a create process A. So now recalling the blog post that I read about this in new injection technique that BogBot is using, I know that they're injecting into SVC host. And again, if you guys recall when I was looking at hybrid analysis, you could see that the the uh, injected process created uh, an instance of SVC host. So it looks like this is actually the custom injector for BachBot. And so what that's going to do is that's going to conclude the first part of this tutorial. So we've unpacked this custom injection stage. And then in part two, we're going to continue on and we're going to look at this new injection method, what they're injecting and how to set up that injected code so that you can reverse engineer it. So stay tuned for that.